Brothers Boys and Brads. Um, I'm so sorry for not coming to you for so many weeks. It's more or less a long story. I've been out of the country and since the update on my computer and my phone, everything has gone bananas. But if you're watching this a year from now, that will mean nothing. So long story short, um, I have the Makeup Essentials Part 2 video filmed, but it's not working. So I think I'm just going to probably make it into a blog. I already took photos. I think that'll make it easier for you guys. And then also I wanted to ask, I've been out of the country for a while and I've been watching a bunch of videos for inspiration and I've been finding that most people just film their whole makeup thing, then they go back over and speed it up and talk over their speeded up version. So what happened to me while I'm watching it is like I watch it, then I pause, then I do what they say, then I watch it, then I pause, then I do what they say, and on and on. For me it's like I would rather just have them do it with me and go a little slower. But for you guys, if you'd rather make me take this hour-long video and make it into 10 minutes, really quickly do a V, a voiceover of what I'm doing, then I'll totally do that. I'm doing this for you guys anyway, so if that's easier or that's more convenient for you, I'll do that. So just let me know if you prefer that, and I can make that happen. In the meantime, I figured out a new way to do lighting, but it requires me shooting during the day, and today I had a bunch of stuff going on, so... Hopefully next time we have that going on, but really, who cares? It could be pitch dark in here. It doesn't matter. So I already sprayed on my Studio Fix Plus Primer, and or it's just like a spray, whatever. It's basically water. And I got a bunch of new, like, cheaper stuff, like $20 palettes that are, like, 200 different shadows. And I got a bunch of, like, cheaper... Um, foundations and a ton of new stuff so that I can really give you guys more options and more um, ways to do the same things for a lot less so I'm working on that but in the meantime um, I still think this from MAC it is the why is it so shiny there face protect SPF 50 from the prep and prime collection it just smells so good I tried two other primers for the face and I just thought they didn't smell as good and they weren't SPF 50 so forget that noise. Also my skin's been acting really weird lately. I just celebrated my 30th birthday. That's right. I'm 30 so if you're watching this two years from now, I'm 32 now. Who knows what that will be like. Um, I've been feeling like underneath my eyes my skin has been different. And I thought about it the other day. I've been trying some new under-the-eye um, creams and stuff, so maybe it's creating a different kind of, I don't know, fallout or something underneath my eye. I definitely need to look into it more. And I was thinking of posting on Facebook or Twitter or somewhere to ask what people's favorite like under-eye creams are, because the older I get, the more important it becomes to me. And I feel like... Tons of people have tons of different ideas about the best stuff and is it the most expensive and whatever, but maybe if we could just get like a general consensus about what is the best under eye cream, then I might save myself from Botox, which I am like totally petrified of and really don't want to ever get. It's literally botulism in your face, but then I look at the Real Housewives and stuff and I'm like, dang, those bitches are older than me and they look like younger than me. Ugh. I'm trying to avoid that. So with like a retro vintage 50s look, one of the keys is like a super, super um, pale face. And not just pale, but more like uh, porcelain. Like your skin should just be flawless. So you work more on the skin than on, you know, your eyes and some of the other things. So for this situation, and I haven't been doing this regular... Um, usually, but I am going to put on a, um, like just a tinted moisturizer basically. This is a, a Beauty Balm by MAC. I have another tinted moisturizer from Glow Minerals that I really like. I just haven't used this in a long time and I feel like it's getting depressed, so I'm going to use it and remind it that I also still appreciate it sometimes. Wow, with this lighting and my iPhoto, I look like a crazy person. I feel 
feel like maybe I need to turn down this light the darker it gets in this room. And I will after I finish this. Man, so yeah, I just turned 30. I think I thought it was going to be a little bit bigger of a deal in my mind than it was. And maybe I've just been preparing myself for like three years. But I feel like 27 was a bigger year where I started being like, well, I'm not 25 anymore. Like, things are coming my way. Somehow 27 seemed more dramatic than 30. I think by the time you're like reaching 30, you're kind of like, eh. Say la vie. I don't know. I guess I have a life partner and everything. Maybe if he decided to leave me and I had to become single again, 30 might be a little bit scarier. Although really any age, I don't know. Dating is just super hard, I feel like. Trying to find a life partner is like a lot of putting yourself out there and getting rejected lots of times too, which is just really hard on the ego. Okay, so this is like not a step that you have to do, but the more um, fluid of a foundation that we have and the more kind of filled in all the gaps and dents and weird stuff on your face are and the more covered up all the red spots are and all the uh, work we'll have to do with concealer and such will be much less. Okay, so... I'm just gonna turn down this light. It's like making me feel unreal. Okay, yeah, that seems a little more realistic. Okay. Now, with a lot of looks, I'm gonna do contouring and highlighting and stuff with the foundation itself. But with a more pale look, I'm just gonna go straight in for it. Um, I got this a while ago because everyone seems to really love it. It's the Makeup Forever HD, and it's a little bit too pale for me a lot of the time, but for this look, I think it'll be perfect. I want to be a little bit extra pale, and also for this look, um, I want things to be really matte, not shiny, not dewy, so I'm going to use the Beauty Blender. I got this new Beauty Blender which is just kind of an egg shape. Um, and this side, I got this from MAC for like six or seven bucks, but this side is really, really soft and good for powder. So I'm going to try that this time. Um, it's been helping me put on like, put on powder in a matte way instead of um, just dabbing it on with the... Um, brush. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm still going to, I think, use this one to put on the foundation because it helps me get underneath. And so for the Beauty Blender, like, you should get it a little bit wet. Usually I just, like, run it under the sink. Um, since I'm sitting on the floor in my room, I'm just going to dump it all over the carpet and squeeze it out. Don't tell Heath. Okay, so once it's a little bit wet, then I just dab it all over everywhere. And I've been, when I put on concealer under my eyes and on some of the highlighting places in my face, I've been using the Beauty Blender instead of any other brush, pretty much regardless of whatever brush I put my foundation on or whatever I use to put on my foundation. I've been using this to put on my concealer under my eyes because I just feel like the dabbing is good for the skin and doesn't create any lines. But also it just seems to... Um, work and give me the ability to create layers that I can't create when I'm using brushes and swiping. Swiping, the more I've realized about makeup, the more I've started to understand basically swiping anything doesn't work. It's like a common misconception that I think as teenagers we learn to swipe things on our face, but it's not meant to work like that. Everything basically should be dabbed on because it's like working with a canvas, you know, it's creating layers and using different brushes and tools to create different textures, but you know, the same as using an oil paint or something, like the only time you really swipe, swipe, swipe is when you're creating that um, very, very base part. Oh God, 
what happened. Okay, I'm still there. Actually, I should stop now so I can delete that part. So anyways, I used to do oil painting when I was a kid, and it's just thing you put on the base of an oil paint, which I would basically say is something like a primer. And after that, it's all about texturing on. So you guys know one of my very favorite products at this point, which I didn't have even up until like a month ago, is a highlighter pen. I have this one. And I also got another, like, cheaper version. I had to stop by Walmart to get some Red Hot the other day. They don't sell that at my organic markets, and I love it. So I got this L'Oreal Magic Lumi pen. It's awesome. Right now I'm just kind of using this MAC one because I figure it's older and I should just get rid of it before I start using new stuff. But maybe that's, like, an old-school mentality and I need to grow up. Start just using it whenever. So, I'm creating a V. Let me show you. Yep, there you go. And popping it out. Doing a V over here. And I'm going to go in for a like much deeper highlight later. But this is still a pretty extreme highlight. And then I'm also going to do my standard uh, line here and up into here. So easiest way to handle this thing is like I was saying with your beauty blender we're just creating layers and dabbing them in. Uh, I just realized there's a mirror behind my computer, which is the whole reason I set up in front of this mirror, so not really sure what I'm doing. Going amateur because I'm trying to reconfigure everything. And it works best with the Beauty Blender if you look up. And the truth is we're going to come back in again later with a lot more stuff so it doesn't have to be perfect it's just giving us the foundation and the highlight that seems natural it's not a highlight that's going to come from um you know us putting a bunch of shimmer on our face it's more natural I really want to turn this light down again. I'm sorry, guys, but, like, I just feel like a fucking freak out. I don't feel like my face is normal. Okay. Yeah, so we're getting a lot of, like, really good coverage, I feel like, now. And then, because I'm not going to do a super dramatic eye, I think it's safe to put some, some powder on the face now and do some of the contouring and highlighting now. Um, so I'm going to do a standard contour, not a bronze, but just a matte brown color. You can get contouring stuff anywhere. This is a contour brush I got from Amazon. We've talked about it. I think it was five or six bucks. And we're going to go in. It looks really strong right now. But don't worry. After we put on powder and stuff, it won't look like that at all. And then brushing a little bit right here into a more Nike swoop so that it doesn't seem so crazy how that line comes out of nowhere. And then down to our jaw. Down through our jaw and I like to just drag it down on these two pieces of my neck that are kind of darker anyways onto the temples and then around the sides temple and then around the side and then 
we want to contour the nose. Now I've been exploring with, I've been watching a lot of different videos. I've been contouring my nose for a while now and I usually use just like a nice blending brush but I've been working with using some smaller brushes and trying some different effects. So in this case I'm going to use a pencil brush. You can get pencil brushes from anywhere. This is Max, uh, yeah, 219. Um, I like to start kind of at the uh, tip and draw a line around the end like that. Now contouring your nose is going to thin it and it seems like it looks so crazy but once you do everything it doesn't at all and it really thins your nose. It's like a little, I've never had a problem with my nose. Not that I would ever get a nose job, but this is like a makeup nose job until I got into makeup I didn't even even know about. But it's just, you know, after you make your entire face one color, you want to kind of go back in and insert the things that would naturally be there. So you would naturally have like a small shadow on the edge of your nose that comes from basically where your eyebrows are. You just draw from your eyebrows all the way down, all the way down the tip. And I don't know, I don't know if you can tell from how it looked before, but you can't actually tell that there's brown stuff on there, but it does make your nose look smaller and more kind of definite. I don't know, I like, I love that little trick. Then, I used to do blush then highlight, but lately I've been noticing that the highlight tends to really remove the look of the um, blush. So I'm going to take, this is NARS Albatross, which broke, and then I had to use the old alcohol smash the stuff back in technique, which I did, and I'm sure at some point I'll do a video about that. If your eyeshadows or anything breaks, it's totally no big deal, you can fix it. Um... This is one of my favorite brushes. It's a Sigma Tapered Highlight Brush. I just ordered some Real Techniques brush brushes which have one sort of similar to this so I can do a comparison but I love this for highlight and then I love it also for under the eye because it's tapered. Not very many big brushes like this are tapered but so let's take highlight and put it on our cheekbones. I'm definitely really friendly with the highlight. I don't stress about like putting too much on at all because cheekbones are one of my better qualities. So a little highlight along the nose. Oh, here, here. And when I'm doing these kind of looks that are not, um, that are really focused on your facial features outside of your eyes, um, sometimes I'll put a little highlighter right here. Okay. And then I will do a little blush. I just ordered like a really cheap brush or blush set um, on Amazon for $6 just to try. Um, so I'll let you guys know how that goes. But in the meantime... I'm going to do a kind of dramatic blush because I think that's more this style. This is a very pink MAC blush. I don't know what it's called because I glued the magnet on the back before I started doing these videos. But I'm sure any sort of bright pink will do. I've gone through phases where I do different things, like a lot of people come from the back on blush and move to the front so it doesn't look like it came out of nowhere and a lot of people start on the apples and then go backwards. Truthfully, when your face is really flush, it's way more flush right here than in the back so I don't mind finding the apples and then going from there. And then... I'm going to use a just a general translucent powder. I got a new one from MAC which is supposed to be totally transparent and then 
This one from NYC seems like it's translucent. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think I don't like the way the MAC one smells, so um, I'm going to go for this NYC one. And I'm going to use that thing I showed you guys. Knock off a little in here. Oh man, I'm going to need some more of this. And I never go to like Walmart anymore. Okay, so, oh shit. Remember how I dabbed all that, threw all that water on the floor? It's all in here now. Uh-oh. Okay, I'm not going to use this actually. I think that won't work. Oh, that would have been perfect. So instead we're going to use a regular powder brush. And we're just going to set everything that we've done on the face so far and we may have to go back in something I've noticed is everyone says like oh you got to go in and set what you do but then usually I think it just ends up covering shit up um, but we'll just make it kind of our finishing thing to go back in and touch up anything that needs touching up in the meantime our face is more or less done and really Pretty good, with the exception of needing some concealer and stuff under the eyes. All right, so moving on. Can I make my thing brighter? Is that brighter? Oh, this is brighter. Oh yeah, that's nice. Okay, so let's do a primer. And I have a million eye primers. I think in this situation we're going to use one that is clear. So I just dip that on there. And I go back and forth all the time. I prefer to use brushes most anytime. So many people say the warmth from your fingers is good for the primer. So every now and then I try to toy with that. We will go ahead and toy with that right now. And I've stopped really putting primer under my eye. I used to do that, but I think it just highlights my wrinkles. Okay. So for like a vintage look, um, you want to use super white colors under your eye so I want to start with this is a I just like changed some of my things and labeled them this is a neutral palette and the first color I'm pretty sure it's just white from Mac it's really hard to get the colors out now but it's just um, this color which is just totally white totally matte white um, and I'm using a max, I think it's 239. Yeah, this is a 239 brush. It's just, actually, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use this new brush I got a while ago from Signe, Sigma. It's an E50 from Sigma. Let's do that. So just get a shit ton of white on there and just rub that all over. Yeah, that's nice. That like saves a ton of time. Using that littler one, I just have like a lot of space on my eyelids and dabbing on with that little one can take me forever. Okay. And then I have a MAC color from the, I think I even put it in my like blushes collection. It's from the Marilyn Monroe. Oh no, I didn't. It's still in my eyeshadows. But they had like a Marilyn Monroe collection which came out about six months ago. And this was an, it's an interesting texture, this one. Uh, I have never really figured out exactly what to do with it. It's big, like a, like an eyeshadow. Um, and the, and the texture is kind of wet. But it's great with a vintage color eye, which I'm sure is why they made it part of the Marilyn collection. So I am going to use the 239 this time. And I'm just going to put this all over the lid. And we're just creating a really solid foundation here. 
building a really um, solid foundation for a vintagey look is the key and making sure it doesn't all just melt off your face like you look amazing when you leave the house but then later all you look like is a crack whore with like really bright red lips so yeah that's a really solid base there and then I'm gonna take this is actually from a Bobby Bobby Brown collection but it is a when will it come into focus come on now it's just like a really shimmery white color like a champagne white which I have tons of colors like that but I'm gonna take that on this same 239 and put it underneath my eye now I find that things tend to I almost always have to redo my my uh, highlight point here but I think it's good to start with the base. I think stuff wipes away easier that ends up there later if you start with a base there. Okay, so then we want to go back to a neutral palette. Get a, we'll just take the 217. This is a MAC brush, which is, as anyone who's watched any video I've ever made knows, my favorite brush of all. I'm going to use a, um, Let's go with Saddle. Everyone knows also one of my favorite colors. And I'm going to just do a little circle here and then go around. So in my little circle here, I'm basically just getting rid of excess and making sure that it's not this giant uh, piece here that it actually looks like it comes from somewhere inside of my eye which is this corner and then over this corner and then over this corner and then over and I get a little more product and I do the same thing over here it's happening again I look like a crackhead again. Is that the lightest? Wow, it is. Yeah, that's the lightest it can be. So, again, like, you can be really overzealous with the light brown color because this is going to be a transition color. And then, you don't have to get a different brush for this. I'm going to, this is my other favorite brush, a 224 from MAC, which is just like a softer, kind of longer version of the same one. And I'm going to use the transition color, um, oh my god, I want to say wedge, but I think that's my other favorite brown. This is, shit, that's really crazy. It looks like this. It's like a yellowy color light brown. Cork, boom, dang, that was killing me. Okay, so cork, which I also only got recently and has become like a total staple for me. So in between that white highlight color on our eyebrow and the color we just put down saddle on our Transition we create like a middle of the road transition. Not everyone needs this. I have like a lot of space in between my crease and my eyebrows so I can do with two transition colors. A lot of people have smaller eyes or more lidded eyes or whatever and different things are going to work for you. But if you want to make another one, there you go. It's easy. Now we also need one deeper color before we get into what is the dramatic eyeliner which is the kind of staple of a vintagey look. I'll take the 217 again and take a darker brown color. I'm not going to go too crazy with it. I'm going to use this guy here. It's kind of like an orangey color, but it's definitely darker than Saddle. And I'm going to put that again in the corner and then through the crease, but I try to keep it in the lower part of the crease. 
I'm not going to go up as high as I did before. And in the corner and on the lower part of the crease. And if you find, like, I have really light skin, so this, you can see this transition really easy for me. But if your skin is a little bit darker color, you might need to go with a more dramatic kind of chocolatey or brown to create the same kind of transition. So, okay. Pretty legit there. Now, we're going to go for... I'm just going to do the eyebrows just to uh, get them done because I think it makes a huge difference in this vintagey look. So for a retro look, your eyebrows are really important and they should be dark and dramatic. I just brushed them out with a spoolie. I used to use a toothbrush. I don't really see that much of a difference. I was trying to, I guess, fit in and got a spoolie, but this old toothbrush seemed to do the trick just fine. Um... This is a from a Sigma kit that I got. It was like 40 bucks, and it had a highlighter, pencil, and eyebrow pencil, this, a brush, a bunch of other things. I decided to get it instead of the Anastasia kit, and I've actually been really happy. I really like it. So um, I'm going to try something different today. I bought this Sigma flat brush. It's a E15. I've been using this for putting around my eyes for the most part, but I'm going to try, since it's a dramatic eyebrow look, I'm using the dark side of this. This is the medium brow powder. Using the dark side, I'm going to try using this flat brush instead of my normal angled brush. I've been watching a lot of eyebrow tutorials, and here's what I've been doing to create more of an arch. Now I have an arch, but this is how I've been creating more of one. So I've been going from, from this inner corner up to where I feel like it would go straight. Why does my computer just insist on not giving me even two seconds before it does this? Okay. So I go straight across like this to where I think it would make its natural angled arch. So I go from the inside corner here up to its natural angle and just let it do that. And then I also go on the top and let it meet that angle. I don't know. It's a, it's a new thing I'm trying. I've tried a million different ways. I'm going to see how this works after a couple weeks. I'm still trying a lot of different things. So, let's just say that's our uh, outline, basically. I think it's pretty solid. Then I can take an angled brush, or you could take a lot of different brushes. I have a zillion angled brushes at this point. So, I will grab one of them and take up the lighter color basically any brow palette you have will do this it's like a lighter color and a darker color so i'm going to fill in the brow with the lighter color so i just start in the front you always want your eyebrows to be lighter in the front it's like more natural because things are more sparse in the front But my eyebrows are relatively consistent, so I try not to have it be too much lighter in the front to, like, follow what naturally my face does. Although, this is, like, def this is definitely an area where I would be so open to having some... Okay, I'd be... I'm open to anyone explaining anything to me. I'm always down to learn, but eyebrows is one area where I'm... I think they've made a huge difference... I never used to, I thought eyebrows were something I would never do because I thought, oh, I have really great natural eyebrows. And then I've realized, wow, they make a huge difference. So 
I would be super open to hearing different suggestions and stuff about what I should do. For this look, um, I always have a couple different eyebrow, um, they're basically like mascaras for your eyebrows. I'm going to use the darker one. I think I need a new one, actually. It's definitely seen better days, but I just try to gently put it on, and it just keeps your eyebrows in place. Then, this is something I always think looks like shit on camera, but I'm going to do it anyways. In my eyes, in the waterline, what I'm putting on here is, this belongs as a highlight under your eyebrows. This came with my eyebrow thing. It is just a, it's not white. I have white, and white sucks. It's like a peachy color. I don't know. I always do this, and I always end up hating it, but this is what you're supposed to do with this type of look. So on my waterline and on my tight line, I'm putting this peach color. And then I'm also going to put it on my highlight. Now on my highlight, I need to uh, rub it in so I use the same brush. I was using on my highlight before. On my waterline, it should be in there just fine. But I'm going to take this uh, angled brush that, oh, I forgot to tell you guys what, 266. I'm going to take this angled brush and that same uh, saddle color that we put all over our eyes. I'm going to, actually, I feel like this won't be enough. I want more. I want more. I'm going to use this flat brush that we used on our eyebrows and just dip it in that saddle. Put this on the top. I'm just dabbing it on the top line. And I'm going to flip it over and do the bottom. And then do the same on the other side. Just get saddle all over that bitch. And then put it on my top. Put it on my bottom. And then I'm actually going to use what I said I was going to use with the other one with my darker brown color. The same one that we put in the underneath. We're going to put really close to the waterline but only like three quarters of the way across the eyeball so we're creating the illusion of a natural almond shape and then up above And then what we're going to do is a really ballsy eyeliner. And I'm also going to get some lashes and some other stuff, but I will be right back. Okay, had to get a refill, pull myself together. This is the hardest part. We are going to do a serious cat eye. <sighs> I have yet to find the liquid eyeliner that I love. Um... I have tried a million different things. Um, just right now, this is just from MAC, just to give you guys an idea. This is um, one shaped like this. This is one that's like just your standard liquid kind of pencil from MAC. This is like another one, like really, they suck. I don't like any of them. I'm going to use a gel liner, which is a um, MAC right now. I just have spent so much money. I can't just keep, like, buying a million zillion things, but I definitely want to try. This is MAC Black Track. I definitely want to try some other ones. 
Um, so to create this, to create any line, you have a lot of choices. Basically, my choices in this scenario would be, I'm just looking for um, a couple others. So a really super thin pencil, which this one's the MAC 210. This is like a little bit thicker. It's a Sephora version, but basically the same. Um, this is a MAC 211. It's short and in, an, in like a triangle. And we have like a tapered brush, which this is the MAC 266. I have several versions from other brands that are similar, but I like this one because the brushes are kind of hard. And then this is the um, Sigma brush we talked about earlier, the Flat Definer E15, which I've never actually used to do a liner. Maybe I should try it. What if it sucks? Let's try it. Let's gamble. Okay. So, since it looks so wacky in the actual camera, I'm probably going to use this. Um, oh my god, this is going to be funny. So usually I start in the middle and work my way out, but because I'm using this totally bizarro brush, I'm going to go like this. Hmm. Probably going to have to fix this. And then I might just do the same on the other side to be semi-symmetrical. Meh. It's not terrible. Okay. Still a little bit funky. But I think we can work with it. Okay. I don't know. This might be just so ridiculous. I'm so weird. I make the weirdest decisions. So I'm just going to try to bring this in. And then just stab it. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's okay. It's like really smooth. So I can already tell based on how I just did this eye that I'm going to have to go back over and add more over here. That's fine. That's part of the game. I really kind of think it's awesome and way easier and actually in this case scenario I'm going to use this to fill in my tight line a little bit so it doesn't look like the eyeliner comes out of nowhere and this brush is so soft it's not like ripping my eyeballs out which is what usually happens when I try to do anything with my tight line or my water line so let me just okay so here's what I'm going to do. I think this did an amazing job. I'm actually really impressed. I'm going to take the same brush that I, the angled brush that I did my eyebrows with, and I'm going to go in and try to kind of just clean up any of the mess. So, okay. Yep. So I just needed a little more pointy and a little more straight. Anyone that says they have the secret to cat eyes is lying. Secret is trusting yourself 
to fix it. Yep. The angled brush is one of the best ways to get the same on both sides, but as I've mentioned a million times in all my videos, your eyes are shaped differently, your whole entire face is different on both sides, so it's never going to be exactly the same, and it's actually about doing makeup to try to make it appear as if it's the same. Which, in this case, I need to make it thicker on this side. I can do always you can always add more taking away significantly harder I want to bring a little bit down. That was more than I wanted, but what can you do? It's so weird how your eyes are shaped different. It's just so weird. Like, you can do things exactly the same, and it just doesn't look like that. It's fucking crazy. I got a bunch of new eyelashes the other day, so we're definitely going to play with those today. But before we get there, let's... Actually, let's do that before we do concealer. I'm going to go get my new eyelashes. Hold on. Okay, I just want to tell you guys, I've tried a million lashes. I've done a bunch of research. And now I'm about to try a bunch more. So... I went on this website, which apparently is like the eyelash place. It only sells fake eyelashes. It's called Madame Madeline. I'll put the link below. I got $100 worth of eyelashes because if you get $100 worth, you get free shipping. And I'll put a thing below. If you use the code FALSIES, F-A-L-S-I-E-S, -S, you get 10% off. And that's after you already agree like the hundred dollars hundred bucks cool get 10% off still get free shipping um the lashes I'm going to use for this look are these new um are Del kind which are pretty fucking stupid expensive to be honest with you I probably won't buy them again but they're like five dollars they're called double ups they're supposed to be two lashes put together so you don't have to do two one of the things I've been like doing a lot lately is using just these like end lashes. They're called, these are uh, mod lash accents, but there's, the Ardell versions are called, um, I think they're called accents still. Um, yeah, the Ardell version is just called accents. And it's funny because for a long time I've been just taking eyelashes and cutting them off and using just the ends. Little did I know they already had them made like this. And the trick is, like, with someone like me who has almond-shaped eyes, I don't... And I have... My eyelashes are not super sparse or short. Um, I have plenty of eyelashes. So all I'm really looking for is the illusion of this, like, catness. And that's what the accent does. Instead of... If you have a really full lash... Um, which is actually what this double up thing is going to do, but it can make your eyes look smaller and I don't need my eyes to look smaller. Now, um, different lashes look better on different kind of eyes. And what's cool about this Madame Madeline thing is they, um, tell you like, this is good for round eyes. This is good for, um, almond eyes, hooded eyes, like no, um, I forget what it's called, but like where you have really like no lid, that's what they're called. No lid eyes. Um, anyways, it has all the different things. Just toy with them, but uh, we'll see. I'm going to put on these double ups and um, come back. I could do it with you, but oh, I don't know. I just can never decide if you guys want me to like fast forward through things or if you want to actually see it. Um, I personally like to see someone do everything and just like try it while they're going through it. So I guess maybe I'll just keep doing that. These are really thick and don't want to come off. And if they don't come off, like you stretch them and... 
Seems like they have like glue and stuff on them. They totally have glue on them. I don't like that at all. Uh, this is the second time in my life I've spent a hundred dollars on lashes. It's really terrible. But if you're gonna be in the public eye, it's like the new thing you gotta do. So I've been this came with a set of lashes that I bought in like Walgreens and I've just I've always used it and thought it was awesome and loved it but it's starting to get to the point where it sticks and actually makes it harder so I'm going to try using just tweezers and I might end up having to go back we will see and let me know if you guys like don't want to see me do eyelashes anymore or just anything it's like I don't know I'm doing this for you so if I'm doing something that you don't like just let me know and I won't do it. Now, I didn't measure these, which maybe was a big mistake because they seem really fucking long. Maybe too long for my eyes. I better have a drink while I wait for them to dry. So you want to blow on them. It's a pretty thick layer of glue, so... I definitely don't want to be preemptive. That's the biggest mistake you can make with eyelashes is trying to stick them on while the glue's still wet. Because it'll just lift up right away. And then it just leaves like glue all over the effing place. Including on your eyelashes, which is super annoying. But if you wait till the glue is sticky, you have to be super good about where you put it. Because it's going to stick when you stick it. I'm trying with just the tweezers instead of the pink things that I usually use, so we'll see. Has it been 30 seconds? I'm a bad judge of time. Oh, I wonder if that is... Huh. Whoops. Oh. So I put it on the middle first, and then I put it on the end. I'm struggling to get it on the front. And I'm struggling to get an angle that makes sense for you. I do think it's a little bit too long. But we're gonna make do. Oh, I wanna dance so bad. It's so hard for me to see like what's real in this white. What I liked about this is that I could go back and like clip it kind of to my real lashes and have them be connected a little bit. These ones are a bit funny but we'll see after we kind of fix them up. So lashes always look a little bit bizarre before you put on mascara and like double back on eyeliner and stuff. Although, what do I know? Maybe this like double up thing was a bad idea, but it's all about trial and error with makeup. You find something that works, you try a million things first that don't work. So this is how I put the glue on, but while I was away in Macau recently, all the glue was at the bottom of this thing, 
and I kept squeezing it out like way too much. So then I would just like wipe it on my hand and then I would run the lashes through the glob that was on my hand. And this actually created like a really fine line of glue which I thought worked really well. I think it's a waste of glue but like since the glues are two dollars or something or three dollars maybe it's worth it. I think I'm kind of a saver so it's hard for me to justify it but maybe I will. So the idea with lashes is that they you're looking down and they are coming on top of where you're looking. This is too far on the inner corner, and I can't stop it now. It's too far. Can I pull it? Sometimes once you set it down, it's like really hard to pull something or switch it. Oh, I think I did it. Somehow I did manage to tug it where I wanted it. And then sometimes like the ends that don't want to stay, if you just push on not directly on where the glue and stuff is but just push the lash like brush it where it needs to go sometimes that's enough to keep it there I don't know this one's stabbing me I'm a little bit concerned that I'm not going to be able to handle this because it's stabbing my fucking eyelid but we all know Beauty knows no pain. They are really pretty and cool, actually. Okay, so I tried a couple of different mascaras recently, and this one mascara is fucking awesome for the bottom lashes, but it's like tarantula eyes on the top lashes. It's Max Zoom Fast Black Lash. So for people who use almost always, um, eyelashes fake eyelashes on the top this is like amazing on the bottom but it's like disgusting on the top I learned that the hard way the best mascara so far I've found for eyelashes is false lash waterproof by MAC but I'm always open for whatever I like I don't know I feel like people prescribe to mascaras too easily and it's more about the wand than the mascara and what works with like different eyelashes and different looks. So for me, I do mascara after I put on lashes because my lashes are curly naturally so all I'm really trying to do is disguise my natural lashes. So these appear to be my natural lashes. Now usually I put on a liquid liner to disguise the falsy application part but are these the naturals or I don't know it's I can't really see a line from the application so I might skip that which is kind of fun it's having on liquid eyeliner it's such a pain to get off and usually in the morning you still have like r leftover remnants from it <sighs> this is annoying on the inner corner I kind of like these though these are kind of like weird cool um, they're different, but I like them. So now on to some really fun stuff, which is the lips. 
I was gonna tell you like some of the lashes I love. Um, I'll just drop this really quick, but the Red Cherry Black 217s. They're great, like natural kind of wispies. They get longer on the ends. Most of the things that you're looking for from an eyelash, they are. All right, so I already feel like my cheeks aren't pink enough, but I'm already gonna have to fix them up after I do concealer. Um, I don't think I have really any blemishes going on right now. So, for the blemish that I do have, I'm going to use just like a MAC. Um, it's like got a pink, a yellow, like pastel. It's like for light colored skin. I'm just going to use like the really light color around my nose, which everyone knows this is... Uh, Hormonally, everyone gets red here. My nose has been running anyway, so I'll just like do a little here. Now, with red or dark lips, you want to conceal all the way around your lips. And we're also going to put powder around it. Um, this is a way to keep I have the same problem as everyone else, bleeding when I do deep color lips. So we just put a bunch of concealer around there, concealer on the nose. And then we do, everyone knows my favorite concealer, Pro Longwear, which is like this really light MAC concealer. I like this under the eyes because this type of stuff under the eyes gets in my creases. I need something light. My, I think I'm NW20. NC20, I mean. NC20. So I just squeeze out the littlest bit I can, which is sometimes really hard. Sometimes you end up with more than you want. What can you do? Grab a brush. This is a goat bristle brush, 286. Um, but all I do with the brush is Rub all this. Usually I come back in with my beauty blender, but this is like going on really easy and nice. I must have created a really smooth undersurface, so I'm just going to go with it. It's not broke, don't fix it, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Okay. Here we go. It looks awesome actually. Maybe it's just because it's getting darker in here. Or maybe it really does look really cute. I never like to waste, so with the extra, come in here on the nose. I don't think everyone has to do this. I have like a really, um, porous kind of nose it like it gets really red really easily and I can see blackheads on it a lot I don't know if everyone sees them but I see them so let me see if there's any other there's no blemishes but I don't really want to waste so I'm just gonna do the around the lips thing again okay then we want to do powder to set that I look like a funny clown right now. So for the powder to set that, I'm going to use this highlighter brush we talked about from Sigma. I'm going to use the MAC Prep and Prime uh, Transparent Finishing Powder. I don't like the way this smells, but... Uh, put it under my eyes. so nice how it like goes right under your eye. I don't even have to close it. And put some on my nose, around my mouth. So we got like an extra little highlight in there. And then since we got an extra highlight, we're going to put a little extra um, blush. 
but we're going to use, instead of the same blush we used last time, which was a really pink, we're going to throw on something a little more natural. Um, I'm going to go for kind of a like bronzy type color. It's like a really matte blush color. And just to make sure. And we'll put on another highlight after everything's all over. So, all I have to do is get this vintage hairdo going soon. And don't think that this short hair on the side is going to keep me from doing a cool vintage hairdo. Man, what a pain in the ass growing that out has been. But honestly, I like loved having that hair cut so much that I don't care. And it's a way lot easier than growing out a shaved head, which I've also done. Okay, so now we have to decide if we're going to do like a deep purple or a red red. Normally I do red red, but I have all these cool colors that I don't usually use. So I'm kind of thinking of exploring with like a little bit different of a color. Hourglass, Kat Von D. I told you guys that Sephora has this lip collection that's just fucking awesome. So after I bought all of that, I ended up getting these like from Asia, from China, uh, I guess containers to contain all of my lipsticks, which makes me feel like a total pro. And maybe I'll do this one. This is one that I haven't used yet. It came with a lip brush, which I've apparently lost, unfortunately. Um, but I have an old, old lip brush from when someone lived in my basement that sold Mary Kay. So, it's Obsessive Compulsive Cosmetics. No, this is too bright. Actually, when I look at it, this is too bright. It's not deep enough. We need, like, a really, really deep color. This one is from Buxom. Let's try it. It's called Menage. This is this it's also from the Sephora collection that's like $50 and it's a bunch of different um lip colors. So I'm gonna use that, but before I do that, I'm gonna do a lip liner. And how everyone keeps their makeup, I'm curious, because having just come back, oh, I kind of think this is a good one. So this is Prestige Waterproof. This is super old. Um, in fact, I'm not even sure I know what color it is. It's been Carnet. This is, I've had this since... 10 years ago at least. I think I might have taken it from my mom. Ooh, sorry mom. So when the lips are a focus, you want to go outside of your lip line and just be bold. Don't be afraid to do it. And especially you want to highlight that Cupid's bow. And if it's a little, you see, like, already it's like, meh. Just same as our eyeliner. We just go in and make it more defined, more symmetrical. The lip liner is the key in addition to the concealer and the powder to keeping it from bleeding. And I have an additional issue, which is a uh, hole in my face from having a lip ring. 
which they swore to me wouldn't be there. They said the same thing about my nipple rings. They're scars. No, your body totally heals. And somewhere in my mind, I just knew that wasn't possible. I was like, that's not, there's going to be a scar. I just let them tell me there wasn't. Now, if you have big lips, don't worry about doing this. I don't. So, for smaller lips, you create the illusion of big lips by making the focus be on the center. And you do that by framing the center. And you know, try to make it a little more normal and natural. Okay. Then we go in with a lipstick we chose, which again is Menage by Buxom. Actually, let's take a drink before we start causing problems. Man, these double lashes, I really think they're cool. Hurts, Las Vegas. Why you do this to me? For most people, rubbing it together shouldn't be like painful. It is for me. As like gross as that feels, it's a great thing to do. Now this. It's just a little bit of, um, it's called Cut Loose. It's just a MAC. It was from this like Sailor collection, but I have a bunch of other ones similar. It's just like a white uh, gloss. And you want to put that in the middle again to, I just want to eat off all these pieces of skin. You want to put that in the middle again to accentuate that middle part. Okay, and then we are almost done. Just want to put on something all over to make it all kind of come together. So these are, I have these two, um, they're supposed to be highlighting powders, I think. One is called Soft and Gentle, and the other one was from this Haley Williams collection. But basically, I think a lot of people just use them as highlighter, but I use them as a like all over, just pull everything together kind of look. And I'm going to use the Haley Williams one and just put it on. The brush I'm using is, I think it's Elizabeth Arden. I think I got it from my mom when I moved out of the house when I was 18. So it's probably a brush that came with a collection. It's nothing I think special. Just any kind of big brush you could use with this. And last but not least, start back at the beginning. Fix Plus. And there you have like a very vintagey, heavy lip, fall look. This is me like trying to be so cute. I think I'll take some pictures instead. Bye. Oh, bye. What am I saying? To my boys and broads. Next time. <laughs>